Blind Tech Guys. Three guys, all blind, talking tech. Android, iOS, and anything in between. To get in touch, shoot us an email to blindtechguyspodcast at gmail.com. Or you can find us online by searching for Blind Tech Guys on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at Blind Tech Guys. Of the Blind Tech Guys podcast. Today is Saturday, December 12th, or Sunday, December 13th, wherever you may be listening. Or if you're listening live to the podcast, it's probably a different day than that. Uh, As I said, my name is Nimmer, and I am in... Fremont, California, where it has actually finally rained here. And I would like to wish anybody who's celebrating a very happy Hanukkah. I am joined today with a couple of presenters, and one of them is from Swahili, and one of them is from Afghanistan, or maybe not. I don't know. Hello, Marco. Hello, Nima. How are you, my friend? It's a, a very warm day here down under. It's around about oh, 30, 32 degrees, which is what, about 88, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's warm here today. Which one is down under, Swahili or Afghanistan? Oh, Swahili's <laughs> moved to down under today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually in the middle. I am neither up nor down. Oh, geez. You oh, don't want to be go. neither up or down, depending on what situation you're in. But anyway, that's another story. And we've got a guest on, and and very well happy to welcome uh, Pranav. Hello, Pranav. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, everybody. And uh, I'm going to go through a little bit about what's going to happen today, and and uh, I'll make a couple of announcements, and then we'll get started with Pranav here. Number one, we are going to have an interview with Pranav and he's going to tell us about his photography. He is uh, vision impaired. He will tell us about his uh, photography and uh, his usage of the voice, a little bit about himself and that kind of thing. We'll, we'll ask him a few questions, and it, we'll just generally have a great time. I will discuss Chromebooks a little bit, and then Marco will be setting up one password on a computer, on a desktop PC from scratch, just to kind of show you what that's like, and he wants to do it anyway, so it's a good opportunity for us to demonstrate one password. Then we have a couple of listener emails, and we'll talk maybe a little bit about, uh, briefly about our giveaways that we'll be hosting, so stay tuned for that, More a little bit more about the giveaways, and a holiday get-together. Now, if you are looking for the news section, we do have some news articles that we normally talk about in the show notes. We're not talking about the news today, as otherwise it does get a little bit long, so we do have those articles. They will be in the show notes, so please look at that if you're interested in the news. By the way, if you do like this content, we definitely appreciate you hitting that like button, hit the share button, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you don't wish to subscribe to YouTube, you are uh, you can subscribe on the podcast podcatcher of your choice by looking for Blind Tech Guys or asking your favorite smart speaker to play Blind Tech Guys. And uh, this is very important for us, so please like and share. And we can, it'll help us bring us some more content, uh, bring you some more content, and we definitely appreciate that. Okay, Pranav, how are you doing today? Really, really well. Good. Now, I want to just uh, start out. I've known of Pranav now for a while, and we've been on a, on a mailing list together called Seeing with Sound about an app called The Voice that I've talked about a lot and I've said a number of times is the best single app out of any app that I use and by far the best single app uh, that exists and uh, by far, I think, adds to my life a lot more than really anything else on the Play Store, or App Store, or anything else. And uh, and so I've known of Pranav for a while, and I vis- was very happy to get the opportunity to sit down with Pranav and uh, have a few conversations with him. Now, if you can just start out and tell us a little bit more about yourself, anything that you'd like us to know. I am in New Delhi, India. It's one of these very pleasant mornings. You're talking about temperatures in the, well, early 20s, degrees Celsius. Uh... I am a self-confirmed geek. I be I have been using the voice since oh let's see 2001 maybe, and uh, I do have other interests which center around technology. And uh, I've been able to express an interest in travel ever since I got married. So my wife and I end up traveling as much as we can, uh, which sort of feeds into all of this because it gives me a lot of scope uh, for using the voice in new situations. 
Well, Pranav, you've definitely come to the right show if you're a uh, confirmed and self-professed geek. <laughs> I think you've landed yeah. upon the right show here. What I wanted to find out was, now obviously Nima mentioned earlier that you do photography. So can I ask, are you fully blind, partially sighted? What's your um, vision loss? No, I don't know what I am because <laughs> when I'm wearing the voice... I do have the ability to perceive things remotely. Is it sight? I don't know. Uh, you take away my technology, though. Uh, no, I am organically blind. Uh, I do have okay. some kind of light perception, but that light perception is a bit strange in the sense that I'm able to pick up light, sunlight, and all of that, but sometimes I see light when it's not there. Or then people tell you, oh, you're detecting car headlights, for example. Okay, maybe. So, yeah, uh, congenitally blind, uh, got out of the womb three months early. It was in a bit of a rush. Oh, you didn't want to stay down there any longer? <laughs> no. No one told me the world is such a strange place. Yeah. No internet access. No, no, exactly. Wireless wasn't quite down there yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> so... Um, they stuck me into an incubator and they said, all right, let's give you some 100% oxygen, which is how I got ROP, uh, which oh, is another wow. fun condition mm -hmm. where the uh, retina gets pulled away from the optic nerve. So I have all this um, scar tissue in my eyes. Very frustrating for all the ultrasound technicians who have tried to take ultrasounds of my retina. Um, you get a little worried because you're lying on this huge bed and the technician's are like, move in the probe, move in the probe, move in the probe. And you can see the breathing of the technician pick up because they can't get a clear image. Fun stuff. <laughs> so it sounds like you've really taken on board the voice. And I guess maybe for anybody who's, who's just now starting to listen to us, who has not heard this podcast before, if you can, if you can just tell us a little bit about the voice and maybe kind of uh, what you, what you take out of it or what you value in it. In concrete terms, the voice is a piece of software. What that software does is it converts live camera views to sound. Now, you have a defined scheme by which, uh, which the voice uses. So the advantage of having a defined scheme is that uh, you can learn to interpret what the sounds mean and you can then figure out what you're looking at. So as we, uh, you know, we've done it on this podcast, we've done it everywhere else. There are simply three rules in the scheme. Uh, the panning of the sound tells you where the object is on the horizontal plane. Uh, when was the last time we went to the theater? Oh, it would be at least eight months ago now. Yeah. More, easily. So, you know, you, know, you know how the sounds move when the, in a car chase scene or the way aircraft take off? Oh, yes. The, yeah. So that, that's panning. And that's how you know where something is in the horizontal plane. The pitch of the sound tells you how high an object is in the particular frame you're looking at. So the higher the pitch, the higher the object. And the volume tells you brightness. So the louder the sound, the brighter the object. I have looked at floodlights. Uh, we do have uh, safeguards built in, so you won't get a shriek by looking at a floodlight. The software is based on the Meyer algorithm. The software is written by Dr. Peter Weir Meyer. And uh, he has, th this is, you know, uh, the basic Meyer algorithm. There is a lot more in the way the voice does this. Uh, I know this from painful experience because I tried implementing it myself in code, which was fun. Uh, <laughs> there is a lot of digital signal processes going on there. But, you know, the, the other thing you have to remember with the voice, just before I tell you what I get out of it, is, see, everything in the brain is translated to electrical impulses. And the impulses you get with the voice are the same as those you get from the eye. How do you know this? Uh, the answer lies in functional magnetic resonance imaging. So they stick you in a machine, they play soundscapes to you, and they watch uh, where the blood flows in your brain. Uh, there have been a fair amount of studies, and I will give you a link to those, seeingwithsound.com slash literature.htm, and uh, you can read those studies. Is it vision? 
I don't know. But the point is, because you have these electrical impulses going on, the brain re-recruits the neurons dedicated to vision for processing this input. So, in theory, you have vision. Uh, that's the whole idea. It, it's, it, and this is a very important distinction uh, because you have electronic travel aids like the K sonar, for example, which use sonar and give you soundscapes. And there are a bunch of other apps. But I, as far as I know, besides the voice and maybe the iMusic app, which does something similar, but it uses music to express shape. Uh, they don't have, nothing else has a basis in neuroscience. Well, Pranav, I was about to say there was something around back in the 80s and early 90s which did uh, very similarly. I personally really like the voice and this other particular device which just escapes my mind um, because of the sounds and the soundscapes I've always found for me, and I know this probably isn't the case for a lot of blind and visually impaired people, but I personally found for me that sound works a lot quicker than haptic feedback. That's just me. Um, I think there is room for both to be used, but I'd be interested to know what you th your thoughts are about that side of things and how you go with uh, sound versus haptics, because I know for me, as I said, I much prefer sound, but that's just me, and I know that we're probably a small minority unfortunately i would go with both and i need both mm. uh, the reason being sound works well yes no no two ways about it it works well for me too i haven't had too much experience with haptics because haptic devices are very limited the voice does have a haptic mode where you can sure. get graphs and things but yeah uh, when moving around where I really, really want haptics is, um, let's say you go to the market or you're walking A loud the environment. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yep. A yep. loud environment. Mm. You go to a nightclub. Sure. Um, yep. Forget it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sounds exactly. useless. Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, both are complementary. You need both for something. So, for example, sound for me is very good if I want to do, let's say, some kind of pattern analysis or navigation, maybe haptics, whatever I've experienced is really good if I'm going slow mm. and I'm exploring something in a lot of detail. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now that makes um, complete sense to me. And in yeah. fact, let me throw in a question if we can find out. Uh, there has been talk of marrying the voice with a gaming vest. And I don't know what is the status of gaming vest. We saw some Kickstarter projects come on, but I really wish we could find out what's happened with this gaming vest because we could really have both worlds. Oh, I would love to see the voice uh, connected with something like that. Uh, also, as you know, we definitely uh, interviewed the CEO and CTO of Strap Technologies, and their device looks pretty interesting as well. It would be really good to see the voice connected with those uh, technologies as well. I'm going to send them an email just after this and tell them, give us an API. Yes, um, we'd love that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would love to connect the voice to something like that. Awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and even if you could have like, and I understand, obviously, Envision does good work in their area as well. If you could have all three hooked into the one device, would be absolutely brilliant. Especially having the voice with the strap, that'd be the best of all worlds, really. It, it so, would, and yeah. um, Envision, I think we can kind of, sort of, connect it to the yeah. voice in the sense that yeah, we have that launch mechanism. Uh, but it would be really nice if we had better integration. Some of it is Android, I think. Some of it probably means maybe developers talking a little bit more to each other. But it would be really good to have that. You know, if you could tell us a little bit about the photography side of it and what value do you attach to the voice and uh, and how does photography kind of play oh, yeah. into that? Usually blind people don't really tend to think of photography as a path to, you know... <laughs> To go down. Let me go back a bit. What happened was when I started using the voice, my biggest problem was I was, uh, you know, an adult, but with the vision of a one year old, so I'm like, what is this? And yes, the problem I was, that. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, you're on the internet. Uh, okay, how do I show you what I was looking at? 
So I did a couple of out the car window segments and then we probabilistically tried to figure out, okay, you heard these sounds, maybe it was this. So that's when I started taking pictures and that's when blogging came about and I started uploading those images so that everyone could see them and answer my questions on the scene with our mailing list. And that's how the photography came. For me, uh, what the photography means is I look at interesting patterns, whether it's light, shadow, shape, and I photograph them and I put them up. Uh, I, in fact, get sighted users to describe them because I couldn't be bothered going through all the soundscapes later. I take an awful lot of photographs, um, especially when I'm on a holiday. And it's completely unprocessed, unvarnished, unedited, uploaded as is to WordPress. And for me, uh, it's seeing new things. It's seeing the world. And I'm sharing what I'm seeing with all of you. That is one thing. The second thing is if you're learning the voice or these days, if you are a machine learning engineer interested in computer <laughs> vision, uh, you can go to my blog, look at the images, look at the descriptions there and tune your models because uh, I've done this. Uh, I've taken images from my blog and inserted them into Microsoft Word to use the auto captioning feature. Let's just say I could not <laughs> automate my image descriptions. Uh, not happening anytime soon. Uh, and, and you'll see this. Uh, I don't know if either of you saw this uh, video clip on the BBC demonstrating the iPhone. Yes. Um, yep. Yeah. I've seen it. I, I don't know what app that was, but mm. the problem there is okay, one is misidentification. That's one thing. But you're missing out on texture. You're missing out on the experiential knowledge of a shape. So it tells me tree, 15 meters. <laughs> what sort of a tree is it? Is it a palm? <laughs> is it an oak? And I need to know. Yes, there's a lot of applications in this world at the moment that seem to be fascinated with this sort of technology. I'm not sure why, but anyhow, it's all very... <laughs> It's all very uh, bizarre to me, but... Mm. Well, we were demonstrating. We were uh, trying out an app called Finder the other day, and uh, yes. that was a, by a developer that wanted us to try this iOS app. And, uh, yeah, I'd pointed at things, and it would certainly it would, it would tell me, uh, well, some things were correct and most things were not, but it wouldn't tell me distance. It wouldn't tell me texture. It wouldn't tell me color. It wouldn't tell me so much. It's like, uh, I don't really understand why this is helpful, but... <laughs> yeah, because I'll give you a very practical application. Uh, let's just say I'm in my kitchen and I'm distracted, okay, for some reason. Um, I'm walking around, I point one of these apps, it tells me, pan. Well, okay, is it a hot pan? Is there something hot in the liquid, you know, in it? I don't know. Maybe I'll just pick it up and, you know, I'm listening to music. Maybe I'll rock the pan and out comes all the pasta. <laughs> But with the voice, at least you can see it. And I've actually watched milk boil. Uh, yeah, you can. You can. Yeah, I've done that too. You can actually see. You can once you get reasonable at using it. You can actually point it at the steam, <laughs> which is yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, and you see these flat yeah. bubbles, big mm. flat thingies in the sky, which mm. suddenly pop. Yeah. Yeah, we've been sort of trying to make it clear, and again, it's it's not trying to discourage developers, but what we hope developers will do is be well, be want want themselves to be challenged into making or going out of the norm. You know, we've got enough AI apps, we have enough um, apps that pretend to tell us that something's three meters away when it's not really. We need more development, and that's what we try to push we, through to developers. We need hopefully. Uh, more development and we also need you know I have spoken to so many developers and I asked them okay have you seen these three apps no okay well, do a market survey why aren't those apps popular well, what's going on these hey, good you're developing no 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 two ways about it but you have to go beyond what's there mm. Yep, couldn't agree more. Well, and I think the other thing I try to tell developers is that you have to look at innovation in terms of it's one thing to guide a user somewhere, but it's a whole another thing to provide them with information and, and to ask them, you know, how much information is there out in the world that you see, that you perceive without even thinking about it necessarily, that we miss out on? I, I completely agree. And I'll give an example. Um, till the voice came along, uh, 
I used to find going to any shop other than electronic shops boring. And after some time, even electronic shops became boring because everything was inside a counter, glass case. What do you do? Mm. Now, you know, when I was dating my wife, we went all over the place with, um, you know, she wanted to buy handbags and clothing and look at jewelry and things, you know. And uh, I was able to participate very, very actively in that whole activity using the voice because it gave me so much information. I could see patterns. I could see, I could look inside the counter of a jewelry shop and like, hmm, well, maybe this looks interesting. I don't know. <laughs> you can do these things. And even when mm. we travel, you can play tourist uh, yes. because I've done this and everyone says, oh, look at that. Uh, oh, it's a mountain. What? Oh, a mountain is a mountain is a mountain. Okay, I read about it in geography. Next, please. But with the voice, uh, I can look out the bus window and like, okay, these two hard things are uh, mountain. Oh, right, okay. If you insist. Well, at least you know what it's looking mm. like. And actually, it's surprising how much our brain fills in because um, I was... Um, at a, what we call a hill station. So this is a place up in the mountains. Is that where so, you uh, catch a hill? You take a hill for a ride? Uh, no. <laughs> the hill takes you for a ride. Believe I was going to say, you, you, you're you taking for a ride by the hill, <laughs> not the other you way around. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's sloping, okay? Uh, so the, it's a whole place. And uh, you go up the central street. They call it the Mall Road. You know, like the Bahnhofstrasse in German? Mm. Uh, the station street. So this is the Mall Street. And you're surrounded by shops. And it's a slope. And you're walking up the slope. And then suddenly you see these bunch of people break off. And say, oh, view. So there are these specific areas. It's a, like a deck which they have set up. And you go with benches. And then there's a railing. Uh, you go beyond the railing, you have an interesting fall. <laughs> but the idea is not to jump from the railing. The idea is to look at the mountain, which are a bit far away. And you're talking several kilometers. What's so great about this? And you look at it like, oh, right. I see these two hard things. You call these mountains? Yes. All right. Well, at least I know these are two hard things. And, and what I did do was I tried to get different you know, when I take a photograph, I try to get different angles of the same object. Uh, and that's a lot of fun because sometimes you pick up different shapes at different angles. Yes. Maybe uh, scrub, trees. And I may not be able to tell you it's a tree at that distance, but I will see something hazy. And trees have a characteristic sound anyway. So you sort of come to know that, okay, this could be vegetation. Let's take it anyway. So that's how it works. I've always said, and I know Nima's very much into the importance of us pushing boundaries and what we can find out about from our environment. It's all good and well, in my opinion, to say, well, we have the cane and we can get around and that's great. But you know, I like the possibility of, hey, I can use an app and find out what signs are around me. Or, hey, I can point this app at the shop window and I might be able to read the menu that's in the window or see that there's adverts around there. Whether I'm interested or not in any of that shouldn't be up to anybody else but me. And I like that. I like to be able to have options and the voice allows that and certain other apps allow that. And I think we should really as blind people just try and push forward with that rather than just... I think a lot of people do tend to just sort of say, oh, well, we've got the cane and we've got a guide dog and that's great. And the world just sort of wanders around be around us and we don't really know what's going on except that we're sort of walking around and whatever else. And that, that might be enough for some people. But for me personally, I like to know these things. Uh, I, I couldn't agree more. And, you know, the argument you get around here, the cane doesn't need batteries. Yeah, well, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. It's also really great when uh, someone trips over it and the thing snaps too. Mm. And actually that yeah. happened to me about six or seven months ago. I was walking across the train tracks where the, the gate is and then somebody stepped on it and all I heard was, oh, sorry, mate. And it's like, oh, that's great. I'm halfway across the, the, tra the train tracks with two canes oh, now. Shit. This is brilliant. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. I, I, I am routine. I'm a routine cane breaker. Oh, so am I. <laughs> I would be so, lucky if a cane lasts me two months. And if I can get it to last me longer than two months, then I'm pretty happy. <laughs> sadly, there's only elastic inside it. Nothing particularly yeah. interesting. I tried looking. Mm. 
Well, Pranav, I've definitely, you know, really been very glad to have you on and really mm. enjoyed this conversation. And if, is there anything else that you'd like uh, to tell our listeners? I think one of the most important things you need to know about the voice is that it's almost hardware agnostic. So you can run it on a phone. Uh, I've got it working on a Raspberry Pi. Um, Wait, isn't that the thing you eat? No, I'm oh, not wow. eating a Raspberry Pi. Oh, all right. <laughs> the native app is Android. Uh, you have a progressive web app, so it run off a of Mac. It runs off a of Pi or any other Linux box. It runs on Windows, too. There's a native executable, which I think the last time was, I don't know when, which was updated, but that code still works. <laughs> oh, that was yes. a while back. It was a long time ago now. Yeah. Yeah. And um, what other operating system is there? What have we missed? Uh, Mac. Oh. Mac I'm sure is it would covered. Run on Fire o, Firefox yeah. OS oh. or Fire OS maybe or I don't know. As long as you have access uh, to a web browser, essentially. Yeah, and um, support for what Vuzix. was that? Fusix, yeah, Fusix yeah. run Android. App Store. Um, yep. Yeah, they run Android. No, no. What do they have? Their their WebRTC. Oh, WebRTC. Yep. Oh, I yeah, forgot about WebRTC. I mean, yeah. If you have that Chromebook, you're going to cover. It'll be fun to run the voice of that. It'll totally run. <laughs> it does um, run. Yeah, it does. There you go. And the other so, thing that I always say to, to people, and I think you'd probably back this up, Pranav, is that a lot of blind people tend to try it for a very short amount of time and say, oh, there's, there's too much noise, I can't deal. I think it's really important that people give it a go. You really need to give it a try for a good week or two, really sort of devote and, yes. and, and use it. Don't just try it for a day and go, oh, it's too hard. It's a difference between a packet of chips and a bottle of wine. Mm. Yep. Yeah. So I tend to, I tend, I use the voice every day. And, uh, but one of the simplest things, you know, you might ask yourself, why would you use it on a computer? There's a lot of reasons, but I tell you one of the, the simplest reasons. I have a, a laptop here and I always forget it has a hardware switch and I always forget which way is on and which way is off for the camera. And, uh, before I hop on a meeting every single time, cause I always forget this, I hop, I hop on the voice web app just to check to see if the camera's on or off before I hop in and someone tells me it's off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, we can't see your video and all the same yes. people mm. get very stressed. Well, Pranav, uh, if anyone has any questions for you, uh, what's the best way to reach you? Or can they, uh, do you have a web presence or social media or anything like that? Yes, yes, yes. I have a web presence. Um, okay. TechEsoterica.com is the blog. HTTPS colon colon slash slash T-E-C-H E-S-O-T-E-R-I-C-A dot C-O-M is the blog. Uh, I am on Twitter, Pranav Lau. I'm also on Facebook, but expect a delayed response. <laughs> I deleted mine a while ago. <laughs> now I also write fiction, so that oh, Facebook Facebook's is good for that. Yeah, yeah, so that's kind of. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have? Yeah, yeah <laughs> that is very it, much uh, so. political fiction or? <laughs> no, 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 short stories, thrillers, oh, that kind okay. of stuff. Uh, well, you get a lot of that on Facebook, so that'll work well. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So that's pranavrights.com, P-R-A-A-N-A-V-W-R-I-T-E-S.com. That doesn't have so much of the technology. That's a separate ah, okay. blog and site. Yeah. Yeah. And we, of course, will have all the links for anyone that's uh, not near a computer or whatever to uh, check out in the show notes, won't we, Nim? Yes, we will link to all of these uh, places, and we hope that you will check out Pranav and anything else that he does, and uh, hopefully you'll agree to come back on with us next time. Or, it would be lovely. Uh, any Anytime. You're welcome back anytime. And if anyone has any questions about The Voice, we will put a link in the show notes for that, but it's also been in past episodes as well, and we will try to get an interview over with Peter as well to tell us a little bit, uh, Dr. Meyer, a little bit more about The Voice, and... Uh, Definitely something that you do want to play with. Just be aware that if you open it up at the very beginning and uh, you hear a bunch of squawking and squealing, do not immediately shut it off. Actually try to figure out why it's going on. So, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I want to thank you, Prana, for coming on. And that was an interview with Pranav, a discussion about the voice and his photography. That was really interesting. Well, we'll move on to Chromebooks a little bit now. A couple of questions I've received about Chromebooks. So which one should I get? Okay, uh, this is like asking which pack of gum should you get? There are a lot of different kinds of Chromebooks out there. And 
essentially they're going to be accessible. Now, what are you kinds of things do you look for? Well, you have to think about your budget. How much can you afford? How much are you going to be using your Chromebook? And do you want this Chromebook to be relatively powerful or are you okay with just bare minimum specs? What are you going to be doing with your Chromebook? Do you want it to last? And uh, how long will your Chromebook receive updates? And these are all questions that you want to ask. How much memory, how much uh, hard drive space, how much RAM does your Chromebook have? Now, these last two questions are a little bit less important in a Chromebook, but they still are very important. Now, based off of, of course, the answers to your questions, then you decide, well, what, what should I go for? There are a lot of different price points and a lot of different Chromebooks out there. A very common configuration, you'll see Chromebooks that have 64 gigs of storage, a Celeron, Intel Celeron processor, and four, possibly eight gigabytes of RAM. You might think that's terrible, but for a Chromebook, it's actually quite good because, again, you're just essentially running a web browser. Now, for my personal use, I tend to go into the higher end of RAM. I'd say 8 gigs because the more RAM you have open, the better your performance will be with your screen reader and also the more websites that you can have open at the same time in various tabs. So I would say the more RAM, the better. In terms of processor, um, most of the processors these days are powerful enough for what you want to do, so I wouldn't spend a lot of time worrying about that. Now, if you can get an i3 or an i5, of course, that's great, but they will be a little bit more expensive in terms of price. How much should you be looking to spend? Though this depends on your country, and I can really only talk about the U.S. You're going to look at anywhere between $300 to $1,000, and it really depends on your needs. Now, the $1,000 or higher, those are essentially overkill. You really do not need a Chromebook that costs that much, and they're going to have specs that are pretty good for a Windows machine, let alone a web browser. I would tend to stick to about the $500 price. If you can find something around that price, I wouldn't spend much more than about $700 on a Chromebook. And for that price, you can get eight gigs of RAM, an i3 or an i5 processor and, uh, and a really nice build, aluminum, very nice build, stereo speakers, stereo microphones, or, you know, there's, there's a lot of different specs to be able to look at. And it all really depends on what you want out of a Chromebook. Another question that I've received is, is it accessible? Well, if we're talking about it on this podcast, then you should assume that yes, it is accessible. There is a screen reader called Chromevox, C-H-R-O-M-E-V-O-X, Chromevox. This screen reader is built in, and you can start it on any Chromebook by hitting the Alt-Control-Z keys, or Z, some people say, uh, or most parts of the world say. If you hold down those keys, hold down Alt-Control and press Z, Chromevox will pop up, and you will be guided through a tutorial of how to use Chromevox. Highly recommend going through that tutorial. There are some similarities to screen readers that you know, such as JAWS and NVDA, but there are some differences as well. One of the differences is that we don't really have a virtual cursor, JAWS cursor, invisible cursor. We don't have focus modes and browse modes. We have something called sticky mode. And what essentially that does is it locks down the search key so that you don't have to use, you don't have to hold down the search key or I think they changed the name of it. I'm not even sure what the name of it is now, the Chromebook key or something. Anyway, well, I've just known of it as the Chromebook key. That's what I've always called it. So Yeah, yeah it's, it has been known as the search key, and it's where the caps lock key is, essentially. It locks it, and so then you can use things like H for headings, B for buttons, and uh, there's an automatic mode that is smart enough to know when it's locked and when it's unlocked. But it's very much... It's similar to something like a browse mode, a focus mode, a virtual PC cursor, but it definitely is not those things. There are tutorials that can be found on the web that will link to the website where you can get access to those Chrome Vox tutorials and uh, those and, and YouTube videos as well. The Chrome team has done a really nice job making things accessible. If you ever find an issue, though, you can submit feedback on your Chromebook by pressing this, the combination you hold down the search key and press A and then I, search plus A plus I. And what that will do is that will open up a form that you can then write your feedback, you submit your feedback, and essentially what you're doing is submitting a bug report to Google. They do take those seriously, and they will look at addressing those issues. And they really have gone a long way in the past few years on the Chromebook accessibility. 
It is very accessible. It works really well on most sites, works really well on uh, web apps, so things like Twitter, Gmail, Facebook, if you're using the web app. Now, um, here's uh, another thing about Chromebooks. You can, why would you want to get a Chromebook, essentially? Why would you want to consider one? For the majority of users, for the majority of people, they will meet every one of your needs. They will allow you, and think about what you do. If you spend a lot of time writing documents, if you spend a lot of time on YouTube, if you spend a lot of time on Netflix, watching videos, if you spend a lot of time suffering the net, if you spend a lot of time reading articles, you will be just fine using a Chromebook. Email, anything now, conventional. You spend time doing email, you'll be just fine. Now, you will know who you are if a Chromebook doesn't work for you because you probably already have your professional setup. Now, those would be audio editors, audio engineers, video editing, uh, and you could do some of that with, with Chrome OS, but nothing serious. Uh, anything to do with uh, like Photoshopping or anything uh, more serious with like Lightroom. If you do those kinds of things, probably a Chromebook may not be for you. If you have very specific th Windows apps that you like to run or very specific Mac apps that you like to run and they only work on that platform, so I'm sorry, Chromebooks are not for you. But if you're probably 90, 95% of all the rest of the users, a Chromebook will meet your needs just fine and it will save you money and you'll end up with pretty decent machine with pretty good hardware and updates at least for the next you know, good long time, depending on the Chromebook that you get. Some of them will be getting updates until 2028, 2030. So you're going to get a pretty long lasting machine. And another question I got is, uh, can you do things, uh, I guess, like virtual, like remote, uh, accessing remote or anything like that, remote servers or whatever else? There's some of that stuff, depending on if there's a Chrome extension for it. And there's Chrome extensions and Chrome apps or just about anything you might want to do. If there is, then yes. If there's an Android app, then yes, because Chromebooks will run Android. If there's a Linux app, possibly, because you can run Linux on a Chromebook. Otherwise, the answer to that question is no. But for the most part, again, the Chromebook will meet your needs. And I will link to those tutorials on YouTube and provide uh, access to, to those so that people can look up how to do that stuff and, uh, and understand a little bit more about Chromebooks. If you guys have any additional questions about Chromebooks, please ask your questions. We have a Blind Tech Guys mailing list, and we're on Telegram considering a WhatsApp. And, of course, you can email us, blindtechguyspodcast at gmail.com. We will answer those questions on the podcast as well. And uh, we'll switch over to Marco to do a, a one password installation now. And uh, if he has any questions, then we'll guide him through that. Go ahead, Marco. Okay, Nima, thank you very much. Okay, what we'll do first of all is we're going to slow this down. So the easiest way to do that is Control, Windows, Alt, and Page Down. Now, hopefully this is slow enough because this is very slow. So we are on the password, onepassword.com website. So we're going to do this from scratch. I have never done this, um, so this will be new for all of us. So we're going to scroll down the website and we need to find in... Link for, link fam, link business, visited, link pricing, link security, link support, link log, list end, list of two items, link sign in, visited, link try one password free. Okay, we'll go for the try one password free. HTTPS slash slash one password. Just pressed enter on that. Heading level one, find the one password that's right for your team. Visited heading level two, link personal and family. Visited heading level two, link team and business. Visited heading level three, link teams. Okay, so I'm link all interested in the personal and family. Visited, visited, visited heading level two, link personal and family. So we'll click HTTPS on that. HTTPS slash slash one pod. List of six items. Apps for Mac, iOS, Win, Unlimited, three, trap, two factor. Pricing. Okay, so we'll go visited to link to USB, visit list of six items. Apps for Mac, iOS, Unlimited, passwords, items, and one GB document storage. Friendly 24 slash seven email support. 365 day item history to restore deleted passwords. Travel mode to safely cross borders. Two factor authentication for an extra layer of protection. List end. Best value. Heading level three, link one password families. So that's link peace of mind for you and the whole heading level. I'm going to go for the families one because there's myself and my partner. Link for family of five. You link try free for 14 days. So we'll go try free for 14 days. HTTPS slash slash dot dot one password dot com slash sign up slash. Okay, so we're going to head into a sign up one screen password. here. What's your email address? Edit. So it wants my email address. We'll put that in. I could use Bitwarden, but I won't worry about it right now. Virtual piece. What's your edit? Marco dot at gmail dot com. Next button. Click on the next button. Please wait button. Please wait button. Enter your six-digit code. Edit. Enter your verification code sent to marco.cur at gmail.com. Okay, so this has gone into my email. Search so I'll edit. just open up Outlook. the email. Opening Outlook. 
Inbox not group by expanded date today on red one password verification. There it is. We need the code. Verification code. A one password grab blank. Heading level one. Please confirm your email address. Enter this verification code on the one password sign up page to continue setting up your one password account. Blank. Eight zero two zero three five. Eight zero two zero three five. So I'm going to do Control C to copy. Inbox. Get out of one there. Password, password, Go back into the edit field on one password Heading level website. One, a six digit verification. Paste. Five blank. Just make sure it's there. Next which button. it is. Click on next. Your name edit has pop up. Virtual PC. Now it's going to ask me one for all these details. Your name edit has pop up menu. So we'll pop all this in here. Learn more. Link. Master password. Password edit. So I want to master password. I'm going to pick something. Confirm master password. And it wants it again. Next button. So we click on the next button. Card number edit. So now Virtual it wants PC. my card, card number. number. You will not be charged until your free trial ends. We'll remind you by email seven days before. Heading level one, add a card. You will card number edit. All right, this is where I'm going to invoke Bitwarden. Bitwarden, main region, master password, password edit required invalid entry. So uh, for anyone that's got it, it's the easiest shortcut online is Control shift y No graphics. Master required invalid entry. Type in the password for that. Bitwarden, main region, search vault edit, virtual PC, add item, login zero. There are no logins available. Add a login button, cards two. Okay, we want cards. Link Marco cards to Link Marco Coronado joint account visa. Star 0477 new copy number copy security code. Coronado joint account. Star 0 number security code. Marco code secure number copy. One password password manager for teams, businesses, and families. Brave main region. Edit AI. One password password virtual PC. Okay, let's one see password if this one pa- copy to the card number edit 42395. Yes, it did indeed. Visa graphic. Exploration. Exploration month. Edit 09 slash Exploration year. Edit 23. CVV. Edit 500. Country. So I've clicked on subscribe. I put on my through my uh, card all details reserved. and all that sort of stuff. One password, password. So now I've got an email from one password as well. Sweet I assume I'm going to have to go back to my email. Unread. One password. Welcome to one password. Unread. One password. Your one password subscription is active. Marco Carolet. Group I. Unread. So let's go and have a look at this email. Welcome, welcome to, one, to one password. One password. Surely this will tell me where to go. Welcome to one password. Here are your account details. You welcome to one password graphic. Blank. Your sign in address. Blank. Link HD. Blank. Your email address, blank, send me blank, your secret key, blank, it's in, link emer- it's in your link emergency kit. Okay, that's the emergency kit that we'll need later on. Blank, get started with one password, blank, table with two code one, get the apps. One password is available on all your devices, link get the one password apps. Alright, we'll Untitled click on Rave. that, there we go. Get the one password apps, Rave, right get, spot. get, navigate, visit, list of sending code, link, link, visit, link, 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 list, and list of link, sign, visit, link, list, end, navigation, navigation, link, one password support, end button, link, contact, support, require button. Required invalid entry edit search. Button app heading heading level one get the one password apps article. Learn how to set up before you set up the one password apps you'll need to. Link sign up for an account. Yes, which we've done. List of four items. Instructions for Mac, iOS, Windows. Click on Windows. Android. List end. List of five by one. Link get one password for Windows. There we go. HTTPS Click on slash slash one password dot com slash download slash Windows slash brave. Link get one password for Windows. Best main. Download one password for Windows graphic. Link Mac OS. Link I visit link 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 Download one password X for Firefox Grab link install. Download one password X for Microsoft link install. Download one password extension for Brave Grab link install. Requires a Oh, they have a Brave one. That's nice. Link in- requires a one password account. Link get to no one password separator. Heading level two, same page link or download the companion app extension. An extension to your Windows app. Easily fill logins, credit cards, addresses, and access everything in your local one password account vaults. Download one password extension for Chrome Graphic. And that's another Lincoln's extension that we will probably download, download at a later Lincoln's stage. Download Lincoln's download Lincoln's one password extension graphic. Beta downloads graphic. Heading level three, same page link feeling adventurous. If you always want the newest, shiniest beta releases, our list of free items. Okay, we won't link worry about the beta ones right link now. One password X beta for Chrome requires Chrome. Link one password requires list end. All the versions graphic. Heading level three, link download one password seven for Windows. I assume that's the one we need. So okay, it was up yes. the top. Yes. I must have missed it earlier. So that's okay. We'll click on that. Main region. Download one password seven for Windows link. Save as dialog. File name. Edit combo. One password setup 7.6.785. Shell just 100. Make sure it goes in the right Edit. directory, File. which it already is. It's in my D drive. Save as pipe. Save button. Save Alert. That. Downloading. Zero percent remaining. Alert. Download complete. One. Got nice fast internet. So that's through. All right. So shift F6 to get into the list of. One password setup 7.6. Point. Uh, files downloaded. Then we go context key. Which is the one next to your uh, control key on the right hand side. Context menu open one of two. Show in folder two of two. And we'll click on show in folder. Leaving menus, all other downloads, folder view list view, one password setup. Set. And there it is. Then we go con- 
Context, Context menu. again. Run as administrator. Run as admin is always the best way to go with these things, so we'll click Leaving on menus. that. Folder view, list view, one password setup, 7.6.785.13 slash 12 slash 20, 20, PM application, 10,640 KB, 41 to 181. User account control dot. And we want to click on yes for the user account control. Yes button. All other downloads, one password dialog. Do you want to install one password? Yes button. And obviously we do, so we click, well, we'll see if there's anything else, but I'm no sure button. there's not no. much. Yes button. There we go, we'll click on yes. All other downloads. Thanks for downloading one password. Welcome. Start my trial button. New for one password. Get started with a one password membership. Free for 30 days. Used one password before. Sync using Dropbox button. Start my trial button. Sign in to onepassword.com button. So I guess we need to click on sign in to onepassword.com. So we'll click on that. Sign in to one password setup 7.6.785.x button. Leaving table. Sign in address edit. Add your one password account. Add your one password account to add your account automatically. Sign in to onepassword.com in your web browser. Choose get the apps and click add your account directly. Sign in address email address secret key master password. Secret key edit. Email address edit. Sign in address edit. Email address edit. Right, so we'll put in the email address. Secret key edit. Now we need the secret key, and of course, all other that's welcome to one password in message our HTML. email in that one, welcome one, email. One password link. I think one, it was. One password link. Edit here on your account detail. Welcome blank. You'll sign blank. Link HTTP blank. You'll sign an address blank. Link blank. Well, we could have link uh, HTTPS slash slash my dot one password dot com. Link HTTP. I suppose we better put that in and my one password sign account. Work address. Email address. Edit. Sign in address edit. Space M blank space email address. sign in address edit. HTTPS slash slash my dot one password dot com. Email address edit. Mako dot current email secret key edit. Okay, Welcome to we one. need the secret your key. Your email address. Blank. Blank. Your secret key. Blank. It's in your link emergency kit. So we'll need to go to the Untitled emergency brave. kit. Okay, it has actually signed in. But that was very bad in telling you that. Use the password of Mako Coronado's family to sign into the app. Heavy multiplication X button. Switch vaults button. Review. All right, All so items, we're, items. we're in. Favorites. No items. Very good. Search for your items edit. New item CTRL plus N button. Three items sorted by title button. Yeah. Context menu, sort, title checked. Leaving menus, new item CTRL plus N button. Three items sorted by title, item list, multi select list box, one password account, Marco Carrello, Marco Carrello, Marco Carrello, party popper, welcome to one password. Oh, isn't that nice? I got a party popper welcoming me to uh, one password. I'm very happy about this. Edit party popper, welcome to one favorite button. Private notes tags, last notes field, edit one. Get now, let's see if we can menu, one password. do something simple. So we'll press Alt. Accounts, one password, accounts, view, item. Help F1, item, view, accounts. Okay, let's go... Account Marco Coronado, sign into another account, account Marco Coronado, sign in. Okay, accounts. so that's nothing exciting. View. Let's item. go into Shares item. up menu, shares up menu. No, item. Nothing there. Like one password, new vault on this PC, dot, 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 open vault on this PC, import. Okay, let's try importing everything from Bitwarden. Let's do this as a final thing. 5.08 p.m. Just to give people an idea of... Leaving menus, import. How well or badly this works. So let's try this. Select the option below to import your existing one password data. Learn more. Select the option below to import your existing agile keychain or upvault folder collapsed. Select the option below to one password interchange format one pick. Select the option below to import one password agile keychain or up. Select the option below to add one pass. Select the option below one password agile keychain. Select the option below one password interchange format one pick collapsed. Expanded. Vault for saving combo box private. Yes. Select the one. Okay. So this. How do you import? Uh, just so in order to import, that. what you're actually going to probably want to do is first you're going to need to export your Bitwarden data. Oh, okay. You need to do that. And then oh. I think uh, unless you're importing directly from 1Password to 1Password, you will probably want to import using the web. Uh, it's been a while yeah. since I've done this. All right, this might so. be something that we uh, may explore at a later stage. If anybody wants to know more about importing stuff from one to another, uh, just due to time constraints right on this particular episode, we might explore that uh, down the track if we get any, any interest, because uh, it is. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be a little bit more involved um, and getting into. Yeah, what you'll actually well. need to do is, to, and, uh, and this is the same for all these password managers. What you'll actually need to do is get a plain copy of all your passwords from the other password manager and you're going to you're going to get a copy of that to, man it's a specific format that i'm forgetting but yeah. you're going to get a copy of that and then in your new password manager what you want to do is find the import option and uh, then it will allow you to import into that format but you have to first get all your existing ones out and uh, into into a specific format so but usually on all these password manager websites there are very direct steps with what the process is for importing from one to the other and even exporting if they're nice to you they will have instructions on how to export but i think most people can see that it's fairly straightforward it's not really complicated it's easy enough to install if you are having and i'm more than happy to do a demo of the importing and 
uh, exporting stuff from one to another. If people are interested, let us know. Uh, we are looking at potentially doing a midweek episode, so it's something we could slot in there. Um, if we get any feedback and people are interested, flick us an email to blindtechguyspodcast at gmail.com. So hopefully you enjoyed that. And if you have any additional questions on setting up a password manager, highly recommend that you do this and highly recommend that you use it. Absolutely, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but if you have any additional questions on that, please let us know. Before we get to the listener emails, I did want to talk a little bit about our two giveaways and the potential of a uh, sort of a party. Oh, presents. Yeah. yeah. Presents, yeah. Mm, I like presents. Where's my present, by the way? Yeah. So I, I want to enter myself into the giveaway because it's <laughs> yeah, going to so be pretty I. nice. It'll mm. be really, I don't know if, I, if that's allowed. Can you guys tell us? Is that allowed? Yeah. Can we, look, can, you know, a bit can, of corruption. Are we eligible to win the, the giveaway? <laughs> <laughs> a bit of corruption. Imagine if we just put one ticket each in and it came out. I mean, what's the odds of that happening, Nimmer? <laughs> <laughs> So we are at nearly very close to t- uh, 8,000 downloads. We're just we're under, close. I think. Yeah. We have just under, it's like 79, 78 or something like Very, yeah. very close to 8,000 downloads. Typically takes us about two months, or, or I'm sorry, one month to get to 2,000 downloads. Now, yeah. it's up to you if you share this, if you like this, you know, you get it out there to all your friends, everybody listens. This could possibly be two weeks or one week. It's up to you. But anyway, within a month, we'll be having, most likely, unless we see a dramatic drop-off in our numbers, we'll be having that uh, that first giveaway. The second one is going to take us a bit longer, and that one is, is the YouTube giveaway where we need a 1,000 subscribers. And uh, although we might change that, we'll see. Anyway, we are up to nearly 120 subscribers. So since I've posted this, we've gained about 20 subscribers since I announced this last week. We've got a long way to go. But if you guys share this out and, again, like it and get people to subscribe to the YouTube channel, that kind of thing, we will definitely get there. And if you aren't subscribed and you're watching this, please do hit that subscribe button. Before you go on, uh, Nima, the prize. Have we got any idea what our listeners might be getting for the first uh, giveaway, which is likely to go off, I guess, the $10,000 Ten thousand dollar, ten thousand mark one. Well, I've, we've got some ideas, but it will be. It, Is it, it going to be good? Be, it will be good. It will not be a piece really? of plastic. It will not be mm. something that you wouldn't want. It will be good. It's not something that's going under someone's bed. No, it will not be mm. something. Well, you, you might use it to okay. maybe get something that you might want to put under your bed. I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> what a cane! Oh, cool! I use it for that purpose sometimes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, speaking of canes, yes, yes. yes. maybe we'll get Very you all good. a copy of the voice. <laughs> there you go. Mm. No, uh, it will no. be a worthwhile prize. We're mucking about people. With. Yes, it will be worthwhile. We'll definitely make it worthwhile. Yes. The second thing, we do have a Telegram group, and we are considering potentially a WhatsApp group if there's uh, more interest. Of course, we have our mailing list as well. But if some, if a lot of you are like, uh, Telegram's this, Telegram's that, we want WhatsApp, please let us know. And if we get lots of feedback about WhatsApp, then it is possible that we will start up a WhatsApp group. We also have the Facebook group, and we have a Twitter as well. So again, you can find us on pretty much all those platforms at Blind Tech Guys. The Telegram link is always in the show notes. Now, I also wondered, if, before we get to the listener emails, uh, which I think we haven't really spoken about this, Nim, but I, I guess, well, I think we're in agreement. Uh, Philip Muir, who occasionally actually listens to the podcast, and hello, Phil, uh, suggested a new segment, which we won't hit off with this week, but we'll start it potentially next week. Now, Nimmer, I was hoping that your memory was better than mine, but do you remember what that segment was called? Because I remember thinking it was a great idea, but it's just gone right out of my head. It's been a long week. The do you did, know you know? did you know? That's, that's what we're going to call it, go. the did you know corner. So that's going to replace the app of the week potentially. Well, I think it's probably not a bad idea because I think a lot of a lot of the time it's good for, you know, we give a, a tip here or there of how to use certain things. And we've got to remember that there's a whole bunch of differently able, I guess, um, people in technology, don't we, Nim? So I think it's, I actually think it's a good idea. So Yes, yeah, so did you know? So let us know what you think about that. One thing is that we're going to have potentially a get together of all our community. Oh, yes. See you guys as a community. Mm-hmm. This isn't just a, a fun little hobby for us. It is fun. We do enjoy it. But, you know, I think we really do this for you guys. And and uh, we take away as much as we give on this podcast. And we see this as a big community of, of people. We're looking at possibly having a get-together around the New Year's time frame, uh, potentially Zoom. 
and uh, to have a little party, just to have a little fun, talk, chat, hang out, play some loud music, get in trouble with my neighbors. Uh, it'll be a lot of oh, fun. We haven't done that for a while. Hmm. Yes. If you're hmm. interested in that kind of a party or anything like that, let us know. We will definitely let you know when we've actually set a time for that, but that is something to look forward to because I think this year needs to go out with a bang, and we will yeah. bring it out with a bang. <laughs> and I think it'll be fun. We'll, we'll uh, obviously have a, a Zoom link up. We will promote it well and truly in advance, and it's probably going to be somewhere around about the 30th or 31st, depending on where you're located. Now, I do want to uh, put out this homage to Warren, and we'll talk a little bit about that uh that just uh, briefly and then i will move on to listener emails i keep saying this one uh we have an article in the show notes that we talked about news articles embracing plastic was the best change to smartphones in 2020 i'm sure warren will be delighted by this article since he's always buying plastic things what do you guys think <laughs> uh, i think it, uh, i def i think that should go at the top of the show notes Yes. Absolutely. And but maybe just put a little smiley emoji next to it. We do miss Warren and uh and Austin as well, of course. We have had a, a bit of a uh I don't know what the phrase is, a, a move on, a moving on, I suppose. And uh Warren I like to call it a kish kish. Yeah, Warren has uh you know, has, has gone off in his own direction, and that's okay. We do wish Warren and Austin and that cool group the best of luck. In their new endeavors, we hope that they will listen, and and we hope that you will continue to support us and listen as well. But they, if you've noticed, he's not here. Uh, he will no longer be joining us. Now he is welcome on, of course, as a guest anytime he feels like coming on. But he will no longer be joining us uh, as a blind tech guy. And uh, we are recruiting for other blind tech guys, gals. Oh no, that interested. means I've got to change the song again. Ugh, for God's sake, Warren, can you sort your shit out? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to change the damn song again. Oh. Either that or we just need to recruit someone really quick. We need to recruit mm. someone called Warren yeah. Carr. If you know anyone named Warren <laughs> Carr. <laughs> <laughs> no, hopefully, uh, Warren, you're okay and everything's okay. And uh, good luck with your future endeavors and Austin as well. And uh, anyone else that we've missed, happy days indeed to yes, them. And we do wish you guys the best and happy Hanukkah for anybody who celebrates. Now, let's get on to listener emails. We have some good ones this week. Oh. Rather yes, long do. ones, but good ones. Mm. All right. We have one about Lazarillo, George. Hello, George. He says, Marco, please excuse this unsolicited email, but I caught your podcast about this app and have put it on my phone, Samsung A31 phone. I currently live on the north coast of the Dominican Republic and am having some difficulty with the app. I set it up as directed, but when I'm an explorer, I get nothing, and I also get nothing when I go into any of the other 11 presets, other than it's saying loading, and when I hit where am I, all I get is the cancel button. I have been in contact with the developer, but they only tell me that they cover the entire globe and that I shouldn't have any problems. Is there any phone <laughs> setting or anything within the app that I don't know about that needs checked or activated in some way to be able to use this app. I once saw a nearby the... Explorer online and my dead plague Blackberry Priv right up to the time its battery died about a month ago. And when I went to the Play Store to download it onto this new Samsung A31, I found that it is no longer available for download. So I am wanting to find and activate another app with similar attributes as Nearby Explorer. And why on earth would they quit supporting such an excellent app as Nearby Explorer is another question I have. Thanks. Hmm. I'm going to answer yeah. your last question. We wonder the same thing. Um, uh, not You're not sure. going to find an app, sadly, that's anywhere near as good as Nearby Explorer. That's just if you are APH, George. you really need to be ashamed of yourselves for killing off probably the best navigation app on the uh, on any platform by far. Mm. Uh, you should be ashamed, and I can tell you that the community would have supported you should you have come out and said that you need additional funding. I know I would have paid ten times the price for that app than what it was worth because it is definitely the best app on any platform, and it is just. It really is sad. It's really yeah. unfortunate. I don't get to att attach to ver uh, very many apps. I know things come and go, but it is really sad that this app had to go. It's, it is about the only app that's actually accurate. It is a huge, and it's accurate everywhere, not just in the US. It's accurate over here in Oz. It's accurate in other places. I've heard people talking about it. It's just, uh, it's just a shame. It really is. 
it's not only accurate, but it has a lot of features. Now, we did mm. talk a lot yeah. about this app in the past and press, past episodes, but, uh, you know, it, it really has a lot of features. Now, yeah. if you have had the app and you've had it backed up, you should be still able to download that app. And, um, yes, it is no longer on the Play Store, but if you had gotten it in the past, certainly the, uh, I'm not sure, well, the online version would not be a purchased app, but the mm. paid version, if you had got that, you should be able to download that. Otherwise, the online version, you may be able to find something from uh, APK Mirror, past download or something yeah. like that. So I would check that out. Check out and any maps, of those sorts of uh, places, the, the, the Mirror type sites, George. Maybe we're for you. The maps still do actually download, which is interesting. Yeah. So I don't know how long that will last, but the maps actually, you are still able to up uh, download maps and up and keep them updated. And I do every day because I'm still thinking that, you know, eventually <laughs> it's not going to be that way. So you're praying uh, that it won't go, but you know, it will one day. It will. Yeah. Yeah. Now, as for Les Rio, what I'm, you know, you're using kind of a, what I would call a budget phone and there's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes these phones have different types of issues with some of these apps that are unexpected. And I'm not sure if this is the case. Mm. Less Radio does require web access. So if you don't have web access, you will need that to access the maps. It is, does not have onboard maps. And Las Radio, uh requires that you sort of be in a place that has good location. Now I'm assuming you are. But if you don't have good location or if you have not given the app location access, it unfortunately will not work. So you just want to be sure that you go into your settings and in your app settings and you've given the app location access mm. and um, and that will hopefully sort it out. Now, I don't know about the Dominican Republic and if they have maps for your area. I would assume that they do, but I don't like to I, I i'm not sure and they are pretty worldwide there are people using it in a lot of countries but just because something is global doesn't mean it actually works in every country uh as we all know it's uh it's well i was about to suggest to george maybe just do a quick google search and see if you can find out whether it is uh whether you do have maps for lazario in dominican republic i assume you should I do back you up though, Nim. I I would be checking the uh whether all the the set the necessary settings are on location. Um, I don't know anything else that you feel needs to be turned on. I'd be turning all of that on just for this app because it is a trustworthy app. So I'd, I'd um be turning that stuff on. Um, if you need us to talk you through that, we can certainly do that. Um, let us know. And yeah, it seems a bit strange. It's maybe got something to do with the budget phone. Maybe I don't know. It does yeah, seem I just odd. throw that out yeah. there because certain devices do have certain limitations and certain things. Mm. It kind of makes me wonder a little bit because you said that it did work with Nearby Explorer, so it's less likely to be that, but I do want to throw that out there as it could mm. be a cause. Now, we do have another email here from Ciego, I believe is your name. The subject says, and you have to read the subject because the message doesn't start off uh, making sense. It says... Should I upgrade in attempt to Windows 10? Oh, and BTW, your podcast rocks. Uh, that's a great subject. All right. <laughs> now, the, rest, the body of the email says, From what I found on Dell site, the device is upgradable, but the Windows 10 upgrade checker recommends buying a current device. I have access to the latest version of JAWS, but cannot install on the Windows 7 device. I am using NVDA, which is decent, but not as robust as JAWS. Current config, Windows 7, Firefox 83.0, Dell Optiplex i5, 8 gigs of RAM, purchased 2014. P.S. Mm. Firefox alerted me about your website. Uh, proceeding could compromise my security. Could be my settings. Not sure, but I saw that the site is HTTPS, so I proceeded. P.P.S. I, about me. Being legally blind since age of 13, been in a mainframe develop software developer role for over 25 years, transitioned to .NET World about five years ago, transitioned to full audio JAWS about five months ago, after coming to terms with the fact that zooming at the highest levels was burning what little I vision I have left due to a progressive eye disease, and was frankly not productive anymore. In the last five months, I discovered a whole new world. I believe I lived in the sighted world, thinking I just had to suck it up and get things done. I've been fairly successful up to this point, but my vision had been taking a turn for the worse over the past couple of years. I've had to take a step back and reevaluate some work and life perspectives. In doing so, I reached out for support for the blind services in my community, including JAWS training, and in the community itself by joining the local council of the blind. 
It is through this council that I have come to learn of this new world of vibrant, successful, and even ornery individuals that live their lives not in spite, but in congruency with the physical challenges. Thanks to the steady stream of communications regarding events, technologies, advocacy, etc. I came across a reference to your podcast. I listened for the first time today on the episode on Strapped. And while the product sounds promising, it was the podcast itself. Your team's candor, your matter of fact, factness, and just the feeling of a group of guys just chilling out that has got me hooked already. I'm already trying to figure out how to speed listen through all of the episodes I missed. They all seem to touch on everything that has been crossing my mind, but never had the time or made the time to research because I thought I was too busy living the sighted life. In case you haven't figured it out, I talk too much, but I had to share my excitement in having found this podcast. I always joke that I can program a multi-million dollar computer, but can't find the start menu on my PC. Well, my goal is to start filling in that gap, and I think a lot of that may come from listening to you guys. Uh, Siego, we really do want to thank you for your email. Definitely was touching to read that, and Mm. we, you know, this is exactly why we do this, to help you and people like you, and of course, you guys help us as well. We just appreciate it if you share this podcast with everybody that you know so that somebody else can find the value in it that you have, and we definitely appreciate your comments, and you are welcome to come on this podcast anytime that you want to come on. So please let us know. I definitely agree. And you are more than welcome to come on Mm. anytime at all. And I will just add, uh, Siego, that uh, congratulations and kudos to you for working so hard over the last several months. From the sounds of it, you are uh, getting used to um, being, well, I, I guess eventually you'll be totally blind. And there's a lot of things that you'll have to work through, which I did many years ago. And uh, you will get there and uh, definitely appreciate your support. And I'm glad that you actually get something out of the podcast because it's nice to hear once in a while that people do. And like Nima said, I completely echo the fact that we do it for you guys as long as you guys are enjoying it and any suggestions that you have let us know but we really love the fact that um we got such a, a thorough email from you and um yeah it was really good it was probably one if if we had an almost like a a section nim for the email of the year that'd be pretty close to the top of the list i reckon it was a really oh, nice email to read uh now in terms of the ps the first ps about your firefox mm. issue we we do know this uh what what happens here is for anybody who wants to know, we are using a uh, podcast provider called Buzzsprout. Now, it used to be that we had blindtechguys.com domain, but the domain was forwarding. It was doing a forward to Buzzsprout. So actually, when you visited blindtechguys.com, if you looked in the address bar, uh, did control L or F6 or whatever to go into the address bar, you would find that the address up there said something about Buzzsprout. Now, this isn't really ideal because... If we ever changed podcast providers or anything else, of course we could forward the domain on, but some people would have gotten the old domain and that kind of thing, and it just doesn't look good. So we really wanted the domain to be Blind Tech Guys, and for you to know that this is the website you were visiting when you visited that website. Well, you could do this to some extent by setting up a C name, and we've done that, and uh, Buzzsprout allows us to do that. The problem is that, Buzz- that we have is when you do that, Buzzsprout doesn't actually provide an SSL certificate. So we actually don't have HTTPS. Now, this isn't really that important as you're not filling out a web form or anything like that. Uh, so it's not really crucial for our purposes. We would obviously like to have it, but it's not crucial for our purposes. Now, I've been able to trick it, things a little bit because if you use Google Domains as we do, our domain provider, there is an option to allow for SSL through the domain. So essentially the domain makes it seem like it's HTTPS, even though Buzzsprout, our web host, does not have HTTPS. And the end result is that when you go to the website, at sometimes it will pop up a thing that says this thing isn't secure, or it'll give you a little bit of a message, and you just have to hit a allow or advanced, and then hit allow, whatever it might and be. And that happens with any of these domain down, places, so. like Cheap Domain, the one that I use for another podcast. Is that what it's called? Cheap, whatever it's called. Name Cheap. Yep. Name Cheap. They all do it. You can kind of trick it into it. Or if you just type in www.blindtechguys.com, it works. Um, it's just when you try to type in HTTPS that you're going to have the issue, potentially. Yes. So, and so, you yeah. know, I, what I would say to anybody who's worried about this, 
We are a little dodgy. I mean, of course we are. We, Mark and I are, are very dodgy creatures. Absolutely. But, but no, we, we actually are well, not. Well, we're not selling to. anything. So at the end of the day, we're not a shopping website. We're not a, That's I don't right. know. Yeah, we don't want anything your with card commerce. Number. We don't want your credit card. We don't want any of that. So unless you go to our you know. donation site, which is HTTPS, and there's a link on the page to yep. go to that. And if you go to that, that is most definitely HTTPS. Yeah. So if you'd like to donate to us, you can hit the support us link on the, on the page. It's about the third or fourth link down, and it will be transitioned to a site called Podfan, which allows us to collect donations for anybody who feels inclined. And actually, you so. can check that if you're using Brave or Chrome, because it will actually say secure. If you look at the bottom of our page, it says un, uh, unsecure or insecure, whichever yeah. uh, browser you're using. But if you actually have a look at the uh, donate page, it's very much secure. It's definitely a HTTPS. I was going to answer that, Nim, because he's got a very similar computer to me, Siegel, which is a rather old bomb of a thing, which still works well enough. So if you haven't transitioned over to Windows 10 yet, definitely. Yes, I could not push the point more. You don't want to continue being on Windows 7, really, because it's not going to be very secure for... Well, it's not very secure now, to be honest. I believe Microsoft stopped supporting it, have they not, Nimmer? So uh, yeah, well, we'll be pretty they haven't close completely to it. killed it off, they're about to. Yeah, so definitely uh, be pushing that through, and you won't have a... It honestly works fine on a machine of your ilk and age. It certainly works fine on mine, so... No, I don't, I'm not really quite sure what your issue is, why JAWS will not install under Windows 7. Mm. Uh, I don't think... I, mm. I didn't see any more details on that issue other than... No, there wasn't work. a huge I, amount. I have no yeah. idea why that would be. Mm. Uh, it should Seems install strange. just fine under Windows 7. Mm. And uh, if you have a updated version of JAWS at any rate, it will install under Windows 7, and it will install under Windows 10. So I definitely recommend upgrading and... Um, Yes, the, the answer to that is yes. Do Very much upgrade. yes. Well, Diego, we definitely appreciate your email again. And for anyone else who wants to send us their thoughts, again, we have the email list, the Telegram. You can always send us an email directly, blindtechguyspodcast at gmail.com. And we'll be happy to respond to any emails that you might want to send us. And uh, Marco, I think that was a marathon of a podcast. Yeah, let's uh, wrap it up, I think, Nim. Yes, please like it. Please hit that like, hit the share, hit the comment, subscribe, comment, uh, chat with us. Let us know what you think. If there's anything you'd like to see, if there's something that you hated that you didn't want to see, let us know that too. And uh, we do appreciate all of you guys. We're here for you guys and, uh, and for all of our community. We do wish you a happy Hanukkah if you celebrate and if you... Uh, any other holiday or you know hopefully that you enjoy this time of year i know it's a little bit hard for all of us but let's celebrate and enjoy ourselves and have a good uh, good old time we're, we're all good old boys here <laughs> that's right indeed i was waiting for you to throw that one in <laughs> <laughs> all right well we want to thank everybody for coming on and uh, look for our potentially midweek podcast with a little bit more about one password especially on ios and android and getting that running and we'll see you guys next week. Yeah, indeed. And as always, uh, thank you, listeners. And we'll catch you very soon. Thanks for tuning in to Blind Tech Guys. Three guys, all blind, talking Android, iOS, and anything in between. To get in touch, send us an email to blindtechguyspodcast at gmail.com or you can find us online by searching on Facebook for Blind Tech Guys or follow us on Twitter at Blind Tech Guys. I was slave and master at the same